Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast here in the week of February 14th. And before we go anywhere today, I want to just give an enormous thank you, a big, huge thank you to all of you who are supporters of us and to those of you who really helped out at the end of the year. We, we finally got all our books balanced and we finished 21 in the black. <laughs> thank you. And we're able to come into the new year here with strength and with resources. So thanks, everybody. You know, we are a nonprofit. We are a crowdfunded ministry and a mission here. And thank you for coming alongside us every month and helping us reach the world and heal hearts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Speaking of hearts, February 14th, if you're listening on Monday, it's Valentine's Day. Hooray! Stacy here. So Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. It has been one of my favorite holidays since way back when, when I decorated my shoebox with wallpaper from our bathroom. I... I love to it. To get little Valentines in To get the classroom because everybody yeah. had to give one to everyone. Yeah. You know, so it wasn't a popularity contest. Yes. You were guaranteed to get it. And I just, I just loved it. And it's never actually for me been about what my sons used to call Singles Awareness Day. It's always been about just the love of God. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. You yeah. are loved. You are loved. You are chosen. Mm -hmm. You are seen. And I think it's appropriate as a segue because we've been talking about bridesmaids and a bridegroom and the wedding feast. And the whole idea of bridesmaids is the idea of the beloved, the belonging. It's really a description about our union with God. Yes. The soul's union with God. Mm. And the need in this hour for a greater measure of that, a greater measure of union, of strength, of resilience, a greater measure of the presence of God in our lives. So that's what we have been riffing on in different directions, and we continue today, particularly continuing uh, maybe part two, we could call it, of a conversation about the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit. And and John, I don't know who wrote this, so I can't give credit where credit is due. But um, remember an author saying that, and, and you know this to be true, everybody, that the way you come to know the Father, Father God initially, is through your relationship with your earthly father. And, and if you kind of have a relationship issue with your true father in heaven, it's probably um, because there's some problems with you and your earthly father. Similarly, if there are issues with um, connecting with Jesus, like if he's the, the person of the Trinity that you have the most difficulty kind of being drawn to, then it's indicative of an uh, issue with siblings. Could be a sibling thing. Right? Because he's our brother. Exactly. And then a flag that if you really like want to keep Holy Spirit at arm's length, it can be because of some unresolved or some mother wounds that you have. So isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's fascinating. And we're not saying that Holy Spirit is mother, but mothering yes. does come to us from God. Of course mm -hmm, it does. Mm -hmm. Re read the close of Isaiah 66. It's just absolutely beautiful on the, the mother heart of God, where he says, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. So yes, comfort, mercy, nurturance, mm -hmm, guidance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Holy Spirit. So what we've noticed over the years is that different people are drawn to different members of the Trinity. Some people just like, it's Father, it's Abba Father. Oh, and yes. There's something really beautiful and really tender there. Yes. Right? I am your daughter. I am your son. Yeah. Okay. And for other people, you and I, coming out of the Jesus movement in the 70s, it's it, Jesus. Totally, totally. I'd so much so that I have a good friend that whenever she prays, she prays Father. And for years, I would be like, going. <laughs> Because I pray it'd be Jesus. Jesus. That was my entry point. Yes. And then for others, and a lot of this might have to do with your faith tradition as well, mm -hmm. it's been the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But our experience is that many people have a hard time 
with the Holy Spirit. Not quite sure how Holy Spirit operates in our lives. They've kind of seen some things that were done in the name of the Holy Spirit that were just weird or odd or, or frankly inappropriate. You know, people will say, I have a word from God for you. And they come up and just blow say something you. really hurtful. Something really hurtful yeah. or, or really inappropriate. Because that never happens. Yeah. And so people keep the spirit of a living God at mm -hmm. arm's length. Mm -hmm. And in an hour like this, when we are cultivating oil, yes. which is the presence of God in our lives, when we need a richer experience of God and to feel filled up, and also a richer experience of the whole kingdom of heaven, yes. like the full breadth of what's available to us, we don't, we don't want to keep the Holy Spirit at arm's length. No, we don't. No, we don't. And so we thought we'd continue that conversation with some scriptures and ideas that might bring a little more clarity of this to you. Ephesians 3 is a favorite passage of Stacy and mine for years. Uh, midway through Ephesians 3, Paul gets down on his knees and he prays for us. He prays for his listeners. He prays for his readers. He prays for the body of Christ. And he says this, for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. This is wonderful. It's such good news, really. Be because the resilience that we need in this hour is a resilience that is imparted. Mm. It's a resilience that is breathed into us, cultivated and, and deepened and strengthened and matured in us from the Father, but by the Spirit. The Father is strengthening us out of his glorious riches in our inmost being through his Spirit who dwells within us so that Jesus may live more comfortably in our hearts. We may have a, just a richer inner change there. Yeah, right? a richer experience of him, a union with him. And what I love about this, oh my goodness, it's like, it's not for this reason I kneel before the Father so that you would drum it up. Right. You, that you would muster it all right. on your own strength. That's, that's not it. Which, going back to some earlier podcasts, reflecting on the end of the age, Jesus gives us some really beautiful counsel. And one of the things he says is, pray for strength. Yes, exactly. Pray for strength. Mm -hmm. Well, here you go. Here's Paul praying for strength for us. And we embrace this, God. We say, yes, strengthen us by the Spirit in our inmost being. And it makes me think of Romans 15. May the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just so grateful for that because again, hope is not something you drum up. It's not something that you create feelings for. We need help with our hope. And yeah. the help comes from Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. Which is so beautiful. The help comes from the power of the Spirit within us. You know what I love about that verse too? May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So we can even pray, Holy Spirit, help me to trust. Help me to trust. Yes. Even that we don't have yes. to create out of a storyline that's filled with broken trust or something, but Holy Spirit, fill me with trust. It's just beautiful. Yeah, the, it's so beautiful. The interplay and the supply from heaven. The supply, the power and the strength of the Spirit of God in our inmost being. Yes. And I love this description even of Jesus, because in Luke 4, after the wilderness trial, after he's been out there and, and fasted 40 days, had the showdown, with the evil one himself, he comes back and Luke 
says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. So there was an impartation. There was a strengthening, a deepening, a filling up of the well, a filling up of the oil that Jesus was able to operate then going into the early days of his ministry. Wow. Wow. Filled with the power of the Spirit. And I can feel it. I feel a weariness. There's, mm. there's a weariness to the human heart right now. Mm -hmm. There's a weariness to the people of God. And I think it is because we are besieged more than we know by the kingdom of darkness, just the accusation or the discouragement or you know the chaos or relational breakups or whatever it may be. I think we're besieged more than we know on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, absolutely. I woke up this morning so strong and so, um, yay, filled with Holy Spirit and great time with God. Well, before 8.30 this morning, there was two pretty significant crises that came my way, SOS calls. And then after just meetings, I, I, I don't feel like I'm soaring anymore. Yeah. So I think that that human condition is yes. pretty rampant. Yes. The human condition is a needy condition. Yes. We take breath. We drink yeah. water. We need to sleep every day. Yes. Every day. And it's a beautiful picture of what we need from God, the bread of heaven, the strength of the spirit, the presence of a living God inside of mm. us, strengthening us. Mm. So the Spirit strengthens us. The Spirit also leads us into the truth. And I love this. When Jesus promises the coming of the Holy Spirit, he says this in John 16. He says, I have so much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. First off, it's incredibly gracious that Jesus never tells us everything. Really kind. <laughs> so kind. Like, we, I don't want to know. No. I don't want to know. Take it. I don't want to know all the things that I still need to repent exactly. of. Exactly. I don't want to know the future that much, mm -hmm. right? Maybe a little bit. Tell me what's going on. Tomorrow. How to pray, yeah. how to plan. But yeah, so kind of Jesus to say, oh, I have a lot more to say. But right now, I just don't think it would be helpful for you. You can't really handle it. However, I'm promising you that the spirit of truth will come. Uh, and, and he says, and he will be with you and he will be in you. So Holy Spirit dwells within us and he guides us into the truth in so many beautiful ways. So however it is that you have come to Christ, that was because the Holy Spirit led you there and revealed there you go. Christ to you. Right? Isn't that his number one favorite thing to do? Yes. Is to reveal the Son. Yes. Increasingly throughout our lives. And the for true the, Jesus. For those of us who have just had the long years of exasperation of trying to pray and share you know, with a relative or a colleague or even beloved children that just don't seem to get it, it it's, it's because you were given the Spirit. You know Christ because, because the Holy Spirit helped you. And so I, that's what I pray now is I pray, Holy Spirit, help this person, remove the blinders, yes. remove the veils yes. that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians from their hearts so that they may see the love of God mm -hmm. in the face of Christ. Mm, yes. The Holy Spirit reveals God to us. The Holy Spirit's the one who makes the scriptures come alive. Isn't that so good when you're just reading something and, and all of a sudden it jumps out at you? It's like it's highlighted in gold and it exactly speaks to your heart about what the need is. I love how God does that. Or even sometimes I'll open up the scriptures, you know, willy-nilly, and, and it's because the Holy Spirit has led me to do that and to yes. the passage, and that's, oh, that's exactly what I needed in this moment. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. it's so, and so if we're struggling, if the scriptures feel dead to us, well, the scriptures were written by Holy Spirit, right? The New Testament says that the, that the Old and New Testament writers were carried along 
by the Spirit as they wrote the Scriptures. And so if we're having a hard time with the Scriptures, or maybe with a certain passage or a concept, ask Holy Spirit to help you open my eyes. Help me understand what you meant here. What is, what is this about in a, in a current cultural context? How do I apply this in my family? How do I apply this in my marriage? It's, so, it's just so wonderful to have the Spirit lead you into the truth. That is such a brilliant prayer. I think it's it's one worth praying every time you open the scriptures because you want Holy Spirit mm. to he's our teacher, right? And like instruct me, teach me, open open up the word that you know your word is truth and is the words of life. So help me. Yeah, and then in every area of life. Yes. Like is this the right time to make a job change? Is is this the right person for me to be dating right now? You know, simple things like, what do you have for us this this summer? Should we stay home? Do we travel? Where do we go? Like, God wants to be in your life in those things. He wants to bless, guide. He wants to protect. And Stace and I were laughing about, we, we took, we, we've taken some vacations in the past that, that, frankly, we forced. We just, like, there was a trip to Florida years ago, and and... Epic, um, an epic trip. <laughs> it was an epic <laughs> failure. Oh my gosh. Because God wasn't in it. He was not in it. But we insisted, we're going. Don't you tell us no. It's spring break. We're sick of winter in Colorado. I need ocean. We need ocean. We need warmth. We're going. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it was a disaster from door to door. And and the Holy Spirit wants to lead us in these things. When it says he will lead you into all truth, it's not only the truth of the scriptures, it's the truth in all matters. It's trying to sort out, you know, the truth of, of what's going on politically or sort out the truth of what's taking place in a difficult relationship. Well, show me. Show, show me, me, Holy Spirit. And, and doesn't Holy Spirit train us too, John, because... Mm. There's an increase in sensitivity to recognizing his voice, yes. right? Yes. If you've tracked along with us over the years, we talk about the power of agreements, negative agreements and positive agreements. When the Holy Spirit um, reveals to you, you have been making an agreement with, no one ever understands me. And then from that agreement, it just affects all of your relationships, mm -hmm. and it, it becomes the, the filter through which you see things. Agreements like, I'll never be loved, I'll never be a man, I'm mm -hmm. not a true woman. Agreements like, I don't fit in, I don't have any real friends, nobody likes me. Yeah, stay quiet, you have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. Agreements like, I, I don't have a voice, mm -hmm. I have nothing to say. We, we've described this over the years, and it is so powerful to break those agreements. Well, it's the Spirit of God who leads us into that revelation that we've made one that helps expose the lie in our lives. And it is a wonderful thing to pray. Holy Spirit, what are the agreements I'm currently making with the enemy? Because when you're in them, you usually don't see them. They become your normal. Right. And they feel so true. We did a a beautiful prayer exercise a couple of weeks ago with a lovely older couple who are very dialed in to the life of the Spirit. And in gentleness and in kindness, they, they said, you know, let's ask God to reveal right now the core lies that have really shaped your life. Like go to the real the core of the core of the core. Let's let's try and get down into the real depth of things here that have shaped your lives. And it was revolutionary. <laughs> there were three for me. And I'm, you know, I'm not saying there were only three, but in this time of prayer, three things were revealed that was like, oh my goodness. That I get it now. I see it now that you've showed me. See, the Holy Spirit is the revealer. Holy Spirit brings revelation in all kinds of ways, right? And in this case, to ask, 
what are the agreements I'm making with my enemy? What are the core lies that I've come to believe about myself or about you, God, or about others? I think this is really powerful because hearing you say that, John, you who um, have lived in this particular message for decades um, and have been asking those questions for decades, it, it reminds me that it's not a one and done prayer. Yes. But, but there's deeper things yes. to be revealed. And God is yes. always about coming after the deeper things. So I would encourage our listeners, if you've done this, yeah, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, do yes. it again. Show me more. Yeah. Show me more. And show me where we're working right now. That's key. Because in every year, in every yes. semester, in every season, God is doing something. Mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. and bringing more restoration and to ask, where is that? Where, where are we working yeah. right now? Yeah. Another way to ask the question, which kind of goes more with the way people talk these days, in addition to what agreements are, am I making is what is the narrative I am telling myself and then fill in the blank about my life, about this person, mm. about this relationship. And, um, yeah, hold that up. Oh my goodness. I think I think we mentioned this on the podcast back in the fall, but I was sitting on another on another conference listening to a, a teacher and he shared the idea that he asked God when he's in a difficult relationship, when something's not going well, when he finds himself estranged from someone or wanting to pull away from someone, he asks, "Holy Spirit, what is the narrative that the enemy is trying to get me to believe about this person. What's the storyline? Right. And that was so helpful mm -hmm, to me, mm -hmm. continues to be helpful to me, but it was like, oh, that's a great way to ask that. Holy Spirit leads us into the truth. And Holy Spirit helps us to test things. And this is really, really big. I, th this is a big piece of, of what I wanted to bring to us today. You know that we've been talking about one of the major forces in the world right now is what we would call desolation. Mm -hmm. And desolation is just mowing the grass in many people's lives, really framing the narrative, framing their perception of God, of reality. I got another email this week from a really good man, a leader, a Christian leader who says, I'm just, I'm losing hope. I don't see any reason to hope anymore. Oh, goodness. You could just call that a rough season, but because we've seen so many stories of yes. that, we, we think that is one of the other symptoms there of desolation, mm -hmm. hopelessness, resignation, defeat, barrenness. Mm. Okay. But here's what's common to many of these stories. And many of these stories, mature, mature believers feeling very betrayed by God or abandoned by God because they thought they heard a promise. Yes. They thought they had received a word from God. They thought that it was very clear to them that God had promised a recovery from cancer or that a child would come, mm -hmm. or, or that a marriage would be healed, or mm. a prodigal would come home. Big things, not small things. Right, big things. Big things. And then it doesn't happen, and it's devastating. And the enemy, whether or not he caused that, and I want to get to that in a minute, he sure jumps on it with these feelings of desolation, of abandonment, of betrayal. Of accusation, accusing the heart of God. In accusing it. God to you. Yeah, it's horrible to come under. And I've received so many of these stories from really good people. And it happened to me last summer that I've described a few times in vague terms on the podcast because it involves other people and I don't want to implicate them. The story is about me. Last summer it was in June. And I, I really thought I heard pretty clearly that God was going to do something in my life that was going to be a real blessing. And not only did it not work out, like the very opposite thing happened. It wasn't just a disappointment. It, it was 
devastating. Yes. So where I thought blessing and goodness and hope and something really, you know, cool was going to happen, it, it's not just that it didn't happen. It's that the opposite happened. Uh, yes. It was it was so full of betrayal and abandonment. And okay, so that's where my heart, my heart's just in that vulnerable place. And then this desolation thing mows in. And what it tries to do is to get you to give up on God, to pull away from God, to doubt the heart of God, to to simply doubt, to just doubt the existence of God. Maybe all of this I've believed is just a sham. Maybe all and it is horrible. Because you guys have experienced, you know, things like fear in the night. You know, when it's normal human fear, you can work your way through it. But when it is demonic fear, it's overwhelming. It just feels like there's no way out. You know, when it's when it's a normal feeling of, no, oh, man, I really blew that meeting. You you can get out of that. You can work your way. But when accusation is coming on demonically. Oof. It is rough stuff because it has so much power and darkness and force, you know, malevolent forces behind it. So I just got, I just got hammered by this thing. And I was sharing this with a wise man the other day about the, the multiple, multiple numbers of stories of other really, really mature people sharing the same storyline. I thought I thought God had promised. I thought he said that we had a word. We had, right. you know, and either it doesn't happen or the very opposite thing happens. I'm like too many stories like that right now and too much desolation there. And he said, oh yes, this is an older, older man. He's got a lot of experience in the kingdom of God. And he said, oh yes. He said, the enemy will do that. He will mimic the voice of God in your life to get you to believe that God has promised you something in order to set you up for devastation. Because we believe in hearing the voice of God. We think it's a critical we part. We depend on it. We really do. And we have a thousand, thousand stories where it has come true. Uh -huh. You know, God, from simple relational things to family vacations to big ministry decisions, mm -hmm. God has guided us. And that's, you know, John chapter 10, my yes. sheep hear my voice. They follow me because they know my voice. In Hebrews chapter three, it says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. In Revelation three, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice, that the whole scripture is a reliable record of men and women who experience God and who hear his voice, Old Testament and New. It's just a reliable record of that. So it is a critical part of the Christian life. You can't memorize enough principles <laughs> to get you through this complex world. And so we have the Holy Spirit. We have the presence of God in us. Speak, guide. But what we are seeing, what we've experienced ourselves, is the enemy will set you up for desolation by trying to mimic the experience of God, by trying to drop in what feels like a word from God. And that's why in 1 John 4, in 1 Thessalonians 5, we are urged to test things. So let me read from 1 John 4. He says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Now, in you know, the hour of John writing his first epistle, there was, there was this big controversy in the church that Jesus didn't 
actually really have a physical body and the incarnation wasn't what we hold it to be today, which is absolutely true and real. Um, and they had to fight that through, you know, through all the church councils and, and get that get that really nailed down for the church. But he's saying, look, somebody comes along or if a spirit comes along and, you know, whispers false things to you about who Jesus is, he's like, you got to test that stuff. Look at the scriptures, talk to your fellowship, ask Holy Spirit to reveal what's going on here. And then Paul says something very similar in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, don't stifle the Holy Spirit. Don't scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said and hold on to what is good. So what we want to say, the beautiful role of the Holy Spirit is to help us sort out what is from God and what isn't from God. Right, exactly. And particularly in the stories from our own lives or the ones that you're sharing, the things that um, people thought they heard from God and weren't were the very things they wanted more than anything else. Mm. So there's that, you know, leap of the heart and, and there's life there and there's hope there. And, um, and I think that it's really important on the big things, like maybe it's less important, should we eat? out tonight or not. You yeah, know? you don't have to test every single moment of your day. Right, right. But but the larger things, you look, we do. In this day and age, we really do. We really do. I think that this is a big piece of how desolation is working against the saints right now, is promises that seem to have come from God, words from people, maybe even you got you know a prophecy at church or something like that, and then it doesn't come true. You shall know them by their fruit. If it's devastating, if it's desolation, that is not God. Right. Right. And so before the heartbreak, what we want to say is on the big things, please test it. And and there's lots of ways to test it. You you look at the fruit of it, right? Jesus said, By your by their fruit, you shall know them. You go, hey, if I you know, I'd love to quit my job today, but if I quit my job today, what's that going to do to the emotional life of my family right now? If it's going to throw my family into absolute chaos, I need to really pray about this and not just do that impulsively or because I think God gave me permission to, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you look at the fruit of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You look at if it's based on the word of God because it's never going to contradict. But I, wanted, I want you to say more about how you pray to discern the spirits because let's say it's a gift of healing like you hear you or someone else is is going to be healed tomorrow from an addiction mm. or from an illness and then and then what well first off i just love the maturity of all this gang do you, do you hear the invitation to maturity so i i thought that some friends were going to have a dream come true. And I thought I heard it from God, but I didn't check in with God and say, really, did you say that? Nor, second step, did I ask, should I share that with them? I was just so excited yeah. that I shared it with them. Yeah. And so far it hasn't come true. And it's it's been you know a while now. And so they were really disappointed by that yeah. because they thought that I had delivered something. Right. I didn't even ask God if I should say that. Right. And and this is a really important thing. You know, when you're operating in a Christian fellowship and you think you have a word for someone or you think that you saw, you know, a revelation for them or whatever, however you you receive that, you really need to test if you're supposed to say it. Absolutely. Or just pray it. Yeah, just pray it. Hold it. You just pray for them. In other mm -hmm. words, you go, oh, that's so beautiful, Father. I'm going I'm to pray that for them until you give me permission to share it. And it, you may never give me permission. I'm just going to pray that you know, the financial breakthrough comes through or, or whatever. The, yeah, the new job or whatever the thing is. Certainly, you test it against scripture. Certainly, you ask for confirmation on big things. You go to other people because when your own heart is so hoping for this to be true. You've got to be really gentle with that and really protective 
that you don't just embrace a word because it is the fulfillment of what you long for. Go to other people. When you are outside someone's story, it's so much easier to hear from God. Yes. It, it really is because you're able to hear no or, or wait or whatever it might be. So test it, test it in a variety of ways. But also when, when some idea or thought pops into my head, I'll ask, I'll say, wait a second. I'll say, Lord Jesus, is this you? Or is this the enemy speaking? I'll ask, ask God, like just right then and there, test it. Uh, and, and if the spirit said, you know, the, the voice says something like, oh, it's me. You go, can you confess that Jesus Christ of Nazareth came in the flesh? Because that's the test there in 1 John 4. And if you hear silence or some sort of, you know, dodge or something like that, you go, man, in the name of Jesus Christ, be gone. I also pray when I'm in a time of listening prayer, and especially if we're asking big questions, we say, we silence every other voice, but the voice of God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We silence our internal voices yes. and we silence every lying and deceiving spirit, cut them off cut them off with the fire of God and forbid them to speak. We do need to test these things and make sure, especially on the big stuff, because, oh, that feeling that you thought you heard, you were sure you heard, and then the opposite happens or the promise never comes true can be so devastating. But in this hour, with desolation trying to take out the saints and the second Thessalonians falling away from the faith going on, we got to be really careful with our hearts. We do. We do. There is so much more to experience of Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, so much of his ministry to us that we, we've just barely begun to tap into here. I want to encourage people. Um, I said at the beginning that I had a friend that would pray to Father and how, and I didn't quite understand that. And I began to pray, I want to know you as Father. Yes. Please reveal yourself to me as Father. And he answered that prayer, like in a huge way, a huge way. And then, then I began to pray, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need to know, I want to know you. Third person of the Trinity, I want to know you. And then he began to answer that prayer. So I want to encourage that wherever you are, perhaps you have a strong relationship with all three members, or perhaps there's one, and usually there is one that we usually gravitate towards more, but you can ask, ask for that relationship. Let me read John 14. If you love me, Keep my commands. This is Jesus talking, obviously. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And what I love about that passage is we are meant to have a relationship with the Father, we're meant to have a relationship with Jesus, and we are meant to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. All three members of the Trinity are in here. Jesus says, I'm going to ask the Father to send you the Spirit, and, and the Holy Spirit will live within you and give all the resilience and the strength and the guidance and the and comfort the and the hope, and then all the beautiful fruits and gifts of the Spirit described to us in Scripture. But then he goes right on to say, oh, I'm, I'm also going to be there. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm still here. I'm still with you as well. And the Father, and we will make our home with you. And so it's just so beautiful to develop a relationship with each member yes. of the Trinity. 
So this is the prayer that um, the staff and we prayed last week when we, we let you drop in on one of our staff times, the prayer to just allow Holy Spirit to come front and center in your life. Let's pray this again together. Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, Spirit who anointed Jesus to live out his mission, Spirit who is so deep in all creation, forgive me for keeping you at arm's length or for putting limits on what you can be in my life. I need you, Lord. I name you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for the scripture says, for the Lord is the Spirit. I give you center stage in my life. I name you Lord of my life, my home, my household, my work, all my kingdom and domain. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. Bring to me all the fruits of the Spirit and every gift of the Spirit. I need a greater measure of the presence of God in my life. I need a greater measure of you. I need strength. I need that mighty inner strength of the Spirit of God in me. Come and be Lord of all my listening and hearing. Come and be Lord of all revelation in my life. Lead me into all truth. Help me discern the spirits. Help me to commune with Jesus in the depths of my being. Help me experience the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, replenish the oil in my life. I need oil. I love you, I worship you as Lord, and I remove every limit I've placed on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who did come in the flesh. Amen. Amen, gang. We just thought that that would be helpful. 